Well, hey there, and welcome back to Hey, It's a Good Life. I am so glad you're here. Today, I'm going to show you one of my absolute favorite recipes. It's super simple. It's real food. It's delicious. It's known in my home country as tortilla de papa, otherwise known as potato pie, basically. We're making French fries and eggs, and it's going to be delicious. Let me show you how. So it all starts with a nice, freshly washed Yukon Gold potato. Make sure you pat these guys dry so you can avoid any splattering in the oil later. Now, I use Yukon Gold because they're my favorite potato. I really don't think you can go wrong. I like the starch content. I like the way it tastes, the way it feels. It's my favorite kind of potato. I don't like russet potatoes. I think they're like way too chalky and starchy. Yukon Gold is where it's at. And I recently learned that they actually have a pretty high nutrient content. So it's up to you, but I recommend the Yukon Gold. I do think it is the superior potato. <laughs> now again, this is totally personal preference. I do prefer to peel my potatoes, but it's not necessary. This is a rustic, very imperfect dish. You do not have to peel these potatoes if you don't want to. When I'm really in a hurry and I wanna get a nutritious, real food meal on the table for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, cause you can eat this for any meal that you like, I don't typically peel these potatoes. I just chop them and throw them in the fry. Uh, the frying oil and off we go. About the only thing I recommend trying to do rather evenly for this recipe is cutting the potatoes even. And I go for about a quarter inch to a third of an inch in width. And obviously, as you probably already know, that just ensures that they cook about the same way and take about the same amount of time to cook. So the closer you can get these guys to the same width, the easier they'll have cooking evenly and for about the same length of time. Um, we're going for again, about a quarter inch to a third of an inch here. Once your potato is cut up and ready for frying, it's time to heat our skillet up with some quality oil. Now, traditionally in our family and in our culture, we use olive oil, but you can use any oil that you like. I actually cooked this recipe at the Rhodes house using some of their rendered fat, and it turned out great. As most of you probably already know, animal fat is one of the best fats that we can be consuming. And so if you're going to fry anything up, just make sure it's a nice quality oil. Then of course, once our oil is nice and shimmery, it's time to place the sacrificial potato in the skillet. And when it's bubbling like this, you know it's time to get the rest of those beautiful potatoes in this beautiful hot oil. Now this is one of those times where I say, do as I say, not as I do. I recommend placing these in here very gingerly with a spider or a slotted spoon or something like that. But you know, you do run the risk of burning yourself, which I have done before doing it like this, as you can see oil spilling everywhere as I plop them in. So this is something that you really would wanna be careful with. Of course, just use your noodle always drop away from you and use a slotted spoon or spider when possible. And then something to keep in mind when you are frying or cooking anything in a pan where you want that Maillard reaction, where you want some, you know, crispy edges is to avoid overcrowding. So I like to make sure that all of my potatoes have separated. It's 
probably better to do this before they're in the pan. <laughs> but in case any have fused together or didn't get cut, you'll want to make sure that they're nice and separated because it can affect the way they cook and you might not get that kind of crispy edge that I so love in a good homemade French fry. So if you're going to make French fries, and you're going to go through all of that effort. Make sure that your French fries get that beautiful crispy edge and you can ensure that you're going to do this by making sure they have plenty of room to cook. So here our French fries are cooking in that lovely olive oil and I see that I have a little bit more room to, to add a couple more. So I go ahead and do that and I'm cooking these over medium heat. Now I know a lot of people have so many different processes for cooking french fries this is mine okay seriously it's so simple i'm not gonna do any kind of like boiling and then frying we are just doing it all in one pan the only thing that i change is the heat so we start on medium heat and then towards the end of the process once i see that they're cooked and they just need help getting that nice crispy edge we're gonna crank the heat up it's kind of like cooking a steak and then getting that nice sear on the edges where it's just really crispy and delicious. It's like that same idea where it's like you cook it all the way through and then you get it really nice and beautiful and crispy. So I think it was right about here that I said, okay, these look cooked. They're still holding together. They're nice and, you know, cooked all the way through. It's time to crank up the heat. So I kind of swirl them in the pan a little bit, make sure that all of the edges here are getting nice and covered with potatoes and all of the potatoes edges are getting nice and um, covered with the heat and the oil. And then it's time to crank up the heat and make sure they get nice and crispy. And here's the thing. If you're going to have homemade French fries, indulge in good salt. I'm using some fine sea salt here by Baleen, I believe is the company name. And I love this salt. It gets on these french fries so well just a nice fine dusting of salt and i add salt in the cooking process and then you'll see me add salt again here in a little bit because here's the thing french fries need salt they taste amazing with salt and i want to enjoy my homemade french fries and enjoy them well so lots of salt is needed now i like to kind of remove a french fry as like the sacrificial french fry maybe a couple just to see if i like how things have turned out here and as you can see we did get that nice crispy edge and again more salt as needed to taste and if i taste one and decide that it's pretty good and i taste a couple more well then i know that the french fries are ready to be removed from the pan and i like to dry them on a towel this is kind of a critical step to make sure that you don't end up with soggy french fries. And of course, salt to taste, it's important. If you're going to indulge in homemade french fries, you want them to taste really great. And salt helps, helps do that. Now you're gonna see me break one of my number one rules, which is no nonstick. I really don't like nonstick. However, it can be appropriate sometimes. Like when you've got a baby in your arms and that baby doesn't wanna be put down and <laughs> You're just not able to do all the things you need to do with that cast iron pan to make this happen. Well, okay, then fine. Break out the nonstick pan and it's going to help those eggs not stick. I'm adding about eight eggs. I want to say six to eight eggs somewhere in there to this. I think it's a 10 inch nonstick pan. Of course, if you're using nonstick, you want to make sure that you use a nice soft spatula and I treat this the way I treat an omelet, just kind of pulling the egg towards the center, then kind of shimmy, sh shimmying, smushing the veggies around to where they need to be until eventually it starts to kind of coagulate and form like an omelet in the center. And what you want to see happen is you'll see it kind of puff up and rise and set into place. And then you know that it's time to flip. And the key here really is just making sure that you cook the egg all the way through. And so my trick to making sure that I can get the egg completely cooked is shimming it onto a pan and avoiding this little flop here, if possible. <laughs> it's good to avoid folds where possible, but as you can see, it's rustic. It's fine, right? It's totally fine. This did end up turning out to be like circular, like a tortilla shape. You'll see, I kind of rescued it here as I flip it. And look at that. See, it's totally fine. It's rustic. It's fine. It's fine. It's rustic. It, it's, it's fine, right? It's rustic. It's fine. <laughs> so anyway, once you've cooked it all the way through, it is time to get out your plate, get out the ketchup because French fries need ketchup. And so do eggs. Are you an eggs 
with ketchup person because I definitely am. I hope we can still be friends. <laughs> and it's time to serve this up. It is so good. Like seriously, I've made this probably 20 times in the last month and I already want more right now. Um, it's delicious, you guys. I hope you guys give this recipe a try. Pro tip, this recipe tastes even better if you eat it outside in the sunshine with your sweet little baby. <laughs> now, if you've made it to the end of this video, I have a little announcement for you guys. I'm assuming that you're here because you are a diehard Hey It's a Good Life fan, and I just wanted to show you that we redid the garden beds. That's all. I just had to confess that things look different here, and I'll share more on this soon. But yes, we redid the garden beds and it is so lovely. I'm so glad that we did this. We actually hired the help of a professional to help us dig everything out because it was just more than we could handle just us. And I think that's a great use of time and resources is getting help and hiring help when needed and where needed. And he was amazing. He got this done so fast. And now we feel so much better having Ruby out here who's about to start crawling, you guys. She's so close to crawling and we wanted to make sure that our garden was safe for her. So not crawling under those raised garden beds. <laughs> it's, a good, it's a good move, I think. Good parent choice there. So it's safe for Ruby, it's safe for the cats and it's even easier to have her out here and we just feel so much better about it. So I hope you guys enjoy the new look of the garden here. More on that in a new video soon. Thank you so much for joining me today for this Tortilla de Papa episode. I hope you guys make this. And if you do, be sure to tag me on Instagram. So good to be with you guys. I hope you have a great rest of your week. Mm -hmm.